Hey there, once again, guys. If this video or intro is too long for you, then please utilize the parts section in the description box below. Now, this is almost an exact copy of my original video on how to create your own custom GPS deformation charts, but I did make a few mistakes, so I had to correct them here. The original video is going to be deleted and replaced with this video. If you don't already know, my name is Ben Ferriolo, and I'm an amateur seismologist who is still actively learning about seismology and volcanology, meaning that I still have a great deal to learn, guys. I even do have my own dedicated website, which you already know if you're viewing this on my website, and it is dedicated to showing you how to find, access, and analyze seismic data, how to find seismic analysis programs, and much, much more. It even contains many pages detailing hundreds upon hundreds of seismic plots and images, regarding many different seismic events. Now, a link to that is below my email address in the description box below. In this video, I do have something pretty amazing to share with you. Well, at least it is amazing to those who want to accurately monitor volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. This video will be featured under the how-to menu on my website on the GPS page. So you know how on volcanoes.usgs.gov and other sources as well, as I'm about to show you, that they show GPS deformation charts, you know, showing east-west horizontal, north-south horizontal, and vertical up, uplifter subsidence, deformation. Remember that? Well, for those who don't know, GPS deformation instruments detect which way the ground is shifting over a long period of time and can be used to monitor volcanoes for swelling or tectonic faults for slip. For example, the, chop, the top chart here, excuse me, shows east-west horizontal deformation which shows the way the ground is moving towards the east or towards the west in a horizontal direction. The middle chart here, right here, shows north-south horizontal deformation, which means if it says north, up would be north, down would be south. Since this says east, up would be east, down would be west. Now, if you take a look at the chart at the bottom, which in my opinion is the most important, that you can see it says up. In other words, vertical, uplift or subsidence, up would be uplift, down would be subsidence, and that is how it is recorded on these plots. Notice how GPS deformation charts usually show a very long period of time, in some cases longer than a decade. Notice about, I'm going to say 1997, probably mid-1997 or so, all the way to 2019. That is way more than two decades, guys. Actually, no, that probably is about 22 years, right? Because of this, very short time frames, say six months, would be from right here to about right here or so. I mean, it's very small. The data would be very squished. So you cannot really see small transients in the GPS deformation data because it's so squished, right? Because it has such a large time frame. Remember, the more time that you add to a plot, the smaller and smaller the events are going to look. So I've always wanted the ability to analyze the data streams of the GPS deformation charts much closer. I found out they are not data streams though, guys. They take one measurement sample each day, one sample a day, and they plot it. So the data is actually just numbers. But again, I wanted the ability to generate my own GPS deformation plots for any time period and for any station that I wanted. It took me a little while to find out. But guess what, guys? I discovered how, and I nailed it down. Check it out. Here we are at the UNR map, the Nevada Geodetic Laboratory of GPS Networks map. Click on Sites for Station Information. This will show all the GPS deformation stations in the entire world. Notice we have Yellowstone Caldera right here. These are the deformation instruments for Yellowstone. And for this example, I will be using OFW2 right down here near the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome which resides right near the Upper Geyser Basin near Old Faithful. There's no specific reason to use this station, just that I want to use it for the following examples. Again, notice the same components, east, north, and up. Processed by the Nevada Geodetic Laboratory, 24-hour positions using final orbits blue and rapid orbits magenta. Final solutions are usually placed within two weeks, but you still get a good idea of how the events actually occurred. Again, east, north, and up. Remember to always look at the labels on the side of a chart, which is in millimeters here, as you can see, millimeters, mm, but sometimes labeled as meters on other plots. That goes to show that reading chart labels is always the number one thing you must do first before looking at the data progression. Now, what is the purpose of making your own GPS charts? 
Well, if you wish to see a longer period of time, say more than a few years or maybe even a decade or two, then I probably suggest using the online GPS deformation plots provided by USGS and the UNR right here. I highly suggest using the ones from UNR. If you just want to go online and look at a few GPS deformation plots, use it from UNR. Again, a link is going to be in the description box below for the UNR map which can serve as a station locator where you can find what station you want to download data from via the UNAVCA web service, or you could just take a look at the plots that they have already. But you cannot change the time frame of the plots, which is why I'm teaching you how to actually download the data. But regardless, for whatever time period you want and whatever station you want, I will now show you how to make your own GPS deformation plots. Actually, you will be able to make them almost exactly like what the professionals create. This is at the unabco.org page under instrumentation, under geophysical, under GPS, GNSS, the Global Navigation Satellite Systems, GNSS, of which the U.S. Global Positioning System, GPS, with satellites orbiting about 20,200 kilometers above the Earth is one constellation, can be used to provide position and time information anywhere on or near the Earth. An unobstructed view to at least four GNSS satellites is required to calculate a position, latitude, longitude, and elevation, and correct for any receiver clock error. Position changes of the GNSS antenna can then be found over time, both horizontally or vertically. Earth and atmospheric science applications for the GPS system typically utilize a GPS receiver capable of millimeter level precision. This high precision capability is obtained by tracking multiple GPS satellite signals and by post-processing the GPS data, along with other stations to provide a network-wide position estimate. This post-processing of GPS data can eliminate many of the errors in order to achieve the millimeter level precision. Permanently installed GPS stations have the advantage of monitoring changes in the position of the station over the long term. Basically, GPS stations, they monitor which way the crust is shifting over an extended period of time, one sample is taken per day because even if an extreme magma intrusion event were to happen right on, let's say, Long Valley Caldera, all of a sudden saw a huge magma intrusion event, one that would lead to a major eruption, it would start swelling prior to the intrusion event. Maybe, I don't know how much longer prior, but still, I mean, so there is always some sort of sign of geologic unrest at volcanoes worldwide, and it usually begins with an increase in seismicity and an increase of swelling. And then it could get worse or it could get better or whatever, but this are these are the instruments that they use to detect volcanoes for eruptions and big faults for possible large earthquakes. So now that we understand that, why don't we give you a second resource that is extremely, extremely important. Actually, you will not be able to continue without this tool here. This resource is extremely important in that it will show you GPS deformation stations in the world. Yes, every single black, I mean, excuse me, blue square that you see on this page is a GPS deformation instrument available for data download for the time range it shows and also available to show you plots from anywhere, from Iceland, from Campi Flegre, uh, Flegre in the Flegrean fields, the super volcano in Italy, uh, many other places, Israel, Jerusalem, Israel, you can go to Yellowstone Caldera, anything, as you can see right here. And you can also see, if I pan this down a little bit, there are also GPS deformation plots from Antarctica. Yeah, I've been spending a lot of time messing around with this, guys. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I'm going to say there are probably over 100,000, if, if more. If that, I mean, I bet you anything there are more than 100,000 GPS stations here. All you got to do is click one. It'll open up the plot. And if you want to download the data, you can go to the UNAVCA web service, which I will show you in a little bit, and download the data for this time range right here if you want for this one station. And it shows you the station name at the top. Very, very helpful. Again, this map, of course, a link below, will show you the location of whatever station you want, but can also serve as an all-time plot viewer plotting all of the data ever recorded by the station. Again, just click any blue square and it will open up the station tab. As you can see, there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of GPS stations all across the world, everywhere. Well, I'm gonna say possibly more than the seismic stations in the world. Possibly the same, I don't know. Cause there, I believe there are about 
110,000 active seismic stations all across the world, at least the ones available to the public. Again, these plots are cool, yes, but I mainly use this for locating GPS stations for areas I know nothing about. For example, the Iris Data Select URL Builder is the web service that I use to download seismic data and is very similar to the UNAVCO web service. This map right here is much like the Iris G map that I use to find seismic stations available for data retrieval. Again, multiple pages in the how-to drop-down menu, including the download data page and the how-to use swarm page. We'll teach you how to do that on my website. Now, having all of these possibilities at your fingertips allows you to monitor volcanic and tectonic hazard areas from the comfort of your own home with the analytic power the professionals use every day. So really, if you are already used to finding and downloading seismic data, which multiple pages, again, on my website can teach you, then finding and downloading GPS data shouldn't be that difficult for you at all, as long as you have this resource and, of course, the next one. And zooming in, let's zoom into Yellowstone, if my computer will allow me. And by the way, if you ever click a GPS station on the North American plate, maybe up in Alaska, Canada, United States, Mexico, there is going to be a separate reference frame called NA12. The original is IGS08, but the one to use when on the North American plate is the NA12 reference frame, which will remove the plate motion. So you can see which way the ground is actually shifting and not being caused by normal tectonic forces, right? Because the plates are always shifting. They're always moving. They're, I mean, we can't feel it every day, but we can when an earthquake happens. But... The ground is always shifting beneath our feet, guys, very slowly, very quietly sometimes, but it always is. And, and you'll notice when you go on these pages, like let's say, let's go to Yellowstone, right? If my computer will let me. My, my goodness. Come on, buddy. All right, so right here you can see OFW2. Let's see, is this it? Yes, yeah. Okay, OFW2, which I'm going to use for the following example. And hold on a second, I just want to show you something before I get into the example. Let's scroll down, shall we? Notice how it says IGS08. Now, now look at the horizontal plots, east-west, north-south. Notice how both are going down, showing us that it is going southwest. The ground is shifting towards the southwest. But wait a second, let's remove the motion of the North American plate. Because it's kind of like a background noise. Of course, this motion is actually occurring. But when you want to see what a volcano is actually doing, how it is actually shifting in that one location, go to NA12 if you're on the North American plate, which will remove North American plate motion. Boom. Look at that. You see a different pattern, don't you? Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. There shouldn't be that much of a difference in uplift, though. Let's go to IGS08. Notice the same uplift pattern. Let's go to NA12. Notice you see basically the same uplift pattern. So NA12 and IGS08 is usually, those, the, the difference between the two is usually horizontal in nature. It almost barely ever, ever affects the uplift subsidence patterns, ever. Because the North American plate, yeah, it, could, it might rise here and there a little bit, but it's mainly going to move in a horizontal direction, not vertical. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. But then again, I do suggest using NA12. Again, this is OFW2. Now for the following example, I'm going to use data between January 1st, 2018 through April 30th, 2019. Remember, only one sample or reading is taken in one day. And I believe it takes another day to post the data and then another two weeks to actually finalize it. This minimizes errors, and especially after processing, can detect millimeter level changes in the ground, maybe even more accurate than that. That is what UNAVCO claims, and that's what it appears to be. That is absolutely amazing, and is definitely an awesome tool to use to monitor major earthquake swarms that you believe to be caused by volcanic activity, among many other things. Now, prior to GPS being used, a form of horizontal line of sight deformation recording was used. It is likely to still be more accurate than GPS instruments, according to John Langbian. It is called Two-Color Electronic Distance Meter, or EDM for short. It has been used along the San Andreas Fault and even the Long Valley Supervolcano in California. It was used to detect the increasing volcanic unrest at Long Valley. Actually, if you scroll down this page, link below, 
you will find Long Valley. Please click right there and you'll find the pre-year 2000 deformation data for Long Valley. It's actually pretty cool to look at, so definitely check it out if you are interested in volcanic activity at Long Valley Caldera. Now here we are at unavco.org slash data slash web services slash documentation, documentation, .html, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to look at that right now. You can just go to the description box below where I leave a link to this. This is the second most important thing that you need. Actually, you won't be able to download the data if you do not have this. Now notice, if you're used to downloading seismic data via the IRIS time series or data select URL builders, you will notice that it's very similar. You know, it has station, time frame, stuff like that. So I was going to use OFW2 near the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome from January 1st, 2018 through April 30th, 2019. Let's do OFW2. Now I use UNR. And remember, here's where it comes in. Do you want IGS-08 or NA-12? IGS-08 will show the motion of the North American plate if you're looking at horizontal deformation. So if you are looking for horizontal deformation recordings as well as vertical, and the station is on the North American plate, I suggest using NA-12. I highly suggest it. Start time, 2018-01-01-T. No spaces, T-00-00-00 exactly like the iris data select url builder for seismic data 2019-04- let's see what was i'm just gonna do 30 t 0100000 i add an extra hour to that because the sample is taken at zero utc every single day so sometimes if you do exactly zero it might not show the most recent data point so i just do that just to top it off just in case Report short, yes, you can do long if you want, but I suggest using short. Reference, coordination, or whatever, let's see, yes, yeah, that's correct. Now, right here, you have to press try it out. Every single time, anytime you change any of these parameters up here whatsoever, oh yeah, and make sure it's in text CSV, by the way, for Microsoft Excel. Text CSV, OFW2, blah, 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 all of that's set. And every single time you change any of the parameters, you have to press try it out first. Now you highlight the request URL. This is what it'll show. This is what it'll show the data for in the file that you downloaded. But what you do, sorry guys, what you do is you just highlight the request URL, open link in new tab. And it'll take a second and the download window will pop up. From now on, I'm going to do this automatically for files like this from now on, so the download window will not pop up anymore. It'll just automatically save. Press OK. So now that we have downloaded the GPS data, let's open it up in Microsoft Excel, which is what you will need to continue. I bet even a slightly older version of Excel will work like a charm. So here we have opened the downloaded GPS data into Microsoft Excel. Note there is a lot of information. First off, N, whether it be delta or STD dev, N means north-south horizontal deformation, E means east-west horizontal deformation, this column right here, delta U or STD dev U is uplift, is vertical uplift or subsidence. You notice it's OFW2 right there. One last thing, in the last video I told you guys to use STD dev. Do not use the STD dev section. Do not use STD dev n. Do not use STD dev e. And do not use STD dev u. You can if you want. It will not show any growing or shrinking trends. It is detrended data, which is what we do not want for what I am trying to achieve right now. I'm trying to achieve the uplift subsidence trends, whether growing or shrinking from January 1st, 2018 through April 30th, 2019. So almost a year and a half of GPS data, a little bit less than a year and a half. But this is trended data, Delta is trended, which is what you need to see the uplift or subsidence trends. STD dev is detrended data, which is mainly used for looking at possible errors. So you go right here, you select the first one, scroll all the way down, notice how it's the third column, Actually, the fourth column to the right, but the third data column all the way down here. Notice it says April 30th, 2019. Shift, select. It'll select the entire column. Scroll back up. Make sure it's delta U for uplift subsidence. Yes, it is. Now, you notice these measurements are in meters. 
are in meters. Now, whenever you want to find the millimeter of any meter, you move the decimal point to the right three times. So one, two, three. So that'd be 93 millimeters right there, 93.4 millimeters. But that is not showing the actual level of the ground. This is done to show the difference of deformation within the time period selected. This will allow us to detect uplift or subsidence patterns even close to millimeter level accuracy like stated by UNAVCO. So really on the plots and the charts that you will make, it doesn't matter where the meters start or how big or small the meters are. The only purpose of this again is to show the measurable difference between data points, which is what you need to judge whether uplift or subsidence is occurring or any type of deformation. So once you have delta U uh, column is selected, the entire column, Let's go up. Remember, we're in Microsoft Excel. Press Insert. Give it a second. Now, I was using a line chart. Let me just show you an example. You can use a line chart if you want, but I have run into many, many problems before with the line charts with this data. Uh, I still use it sometimes. I still use line charts sometimes, yes. But the type of plots that you see on volcanoes.usgs.gov or the UNR page is a scatter plot. Notice the data points. Let me scroll down. Let me pull this right down here. So all you do is press insert and press scatter plot. A simple scatter plot or a line plot if you want. But notice showing uplift or subsidence at the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome at Yellowstone Caldera. Note we do see basically no subsidence was occurring for the longest time. And then right around, let's see, I'm going to say that's 250. Notice it's labeled down here. Sadly, it doesn't show the dates. It always shows the numbers on the side right here. But let's see. So that's around 250. So we go up. Let's see. We want to match the number 250. This is 11 points ahead. Notice the first data point is labeled as 11 on the left. And the first data point on here is labeled as 0. Notice that. So that means, let's say you want to see what date the 300 line is at, going all the way up, right here. Well, you have to add 11. So instead of 300, you would look at 311. So the 300 mark is showing, let me zoom it over, November 2nd, 2018. So 300 on the plot right here is November 2nd, 2018. That is when we started to see ongoing subsidence. Of course, neither really uplift or subsidence was occurring. It seemed like a little bit of subsidence was, but right around late 2018, that's when subsidence actually started occurring at the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. I highly doubt that will last, guys. I really do highly doubt that will last. And again, the labels on the left will always be in meters. If you ever have trouble understanding meters to millimeters, simply Google it or just move the decimal point to the right three times. Now, it is my personal belief caldera-wide uplift will begin again in the next two years. Now, that's just a guess, and I could be wrong. However, we have not been at this low of subsidence since around late 2006. As seen on the GPS deformation charts on volcanoes.usgs.gov or from the UNR map, and there is still an impressive amount of magma down there, guys. But please remember Yellowstone is not the only supervolcano to keep an eye on. For example, Long Valley Caldera is a supervolcano in eastern California that I believe will erupt before Yellowstone does. It has seen much worse activity during the past century than Yellowstone has, at least in my opinion. Long Valley even rose over two and a half feet from 1979 through 2014 and continues to swell even to this day. Some people have even died at Long Valley from volcanic gases after falling into a fumarole and occurring... And during, excuse me, and during the late 90s, there were thousands upon thousands, almost tens of thousands of earthquakes occurring per year, even multiple sixes that struck in one day. I forget what year that was. I think it was 1980, maybe 1985. Forgive me if I'm wrong. But it even coincided with severe uplift and degassing. But there's also another supervolcano called the Valles Caldera in northern New Mexico. Seismic waveform tomography, mapping the terrain underground via P wave travel times, suggests that there is still a very active magmatic system under valves, but the volcano is very, very, very silent. Rarely ever sees any earthquakes at all, ever. But then again, the place is unmonitored, really. Okay, I'm getting off topic, guys. Again, these are meters.
to find the millimeters of this. Move it to the right three times. One, two, three. Some GPS deformation plots on the internet show it in meters. Some show it in millimeters. So that shows the importance of reading all chart labels first. Notice from line to line, and this is some, something to also check. From line to line, each horizontal section from line to line is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, from 20 to 40. Each horizontal section is a total of 20 millimeters for this scatter plot right here. So this is basically how I create my own GPS deformation plots. Of course, this is not properly labeled. I'm just showing this to you as an example of how to do this. A proper label, in my opinion, here, let me show you how to label it just real quick. And what I do is I cut out these numbers down here and actually and accurately date this because I still have not found a way to actually input the dates from the A section into here. But here is how you should label it at the top. OFW2 is the station, space a little bit, UNR and A12, reference frame, one, two, three. Let's do the location, Yellowstone, Caldera. You could say Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome if you want, but let's move forward. Let's see, uh, it was from January 1st, so let's do from January 1st, 2018. Oh my goodness, through April 30th, 2019. And let's go forward and make sure everybody knows that it's in meters. And one more time. It doesn't have to be exactly in this order every time. You could do it in a different order, but uplift subsidence. So basically for any labels, if you create your own GPS plots, you need to let people know the station, the analysis center you got it from, the reference frame, the location, the date range, whether it's in meters or millimeters or whatever it measures on the side and uplift or substance or north, south, or east, west, whatever direction this is showing. And it doesn't have to be in that order. You can make it in whatever order you want. And real quick, there is a pretty cool tool on Microsoft Excel. Let's go to the plus sign right here and click trend line. It'll make a straight trend line through the data. Notice it is showing us that subsidence is occurring. And it's not fully trustworthy. Do not trust the trend line 100%. Because I've seen big spikes in the data right up here. And then nothing. Like very low, 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 low level data. And then it starts to increase at the end. But the trend line still shows it going down. Even though the most recent data is increasing. So take it with a grain of salt. Obviously here we see the trend line is most likely correct. That subsidence is occurring. And there are many, many, many things you can do. Access titles, data labels, error bars. A lot of different things you can do to create your own GPS deformation plots. But basically all you do is just download some numbers, guys, from the UNAFCO web service. So remember, going back, these are the two tools that you will need. So look in the links right below this video, the UNAVCO web service, and the, let me go back, my goodness, guys, there we go. This map, the Nevada Geodetic Laboratory GPS Networks map, which will show you all GPS stations of the world and all of the plots regarding them. All the plots they show are all-time plots ever since the station was activated to the most recent data point. So if there's a lot of data, it's going to be pretty squished. Remember to use NA12 reference frame for any stations on the North American plate, unless you're actually trying to find plate movement, then, then use IGS-08. So I hope that helped you guys understand how to download your own GPS data and create your own GPS charts for whatever time period you wish. So not only can you make your own interpretations for the seismic data coming from Yellowstone and other areas, you can now see accurate millimeter level accuracy ground deformation recordings. Remember, they do take one sample per day to eliminate any errors. Also, don't forget to check out the links below. One link is for the UNR map, which will aid you in discovering which station to use and can also double as an all-time plot viewer for GPS stations around the world. And the other link that is extremely important is the data download web service that UNAVCO provides. Remember, UNR Analysis Center and NA12 Reference Frame is the best to use, in my opinion, for monitoring deformation patterns in North America. I used to use CWU and AM08, but I found out UNR NA12 is better at times. Also, don't forget to press Try It Out on the UNAVCO web service before you copy and paste the link into your URL. Please remember I did make a mistake in my original GPS deformation video. 
Always use the delta section, not STD dev. STD dev shows potential errors and will not show any growing or shrinking trends, which is what we must see to determine the way the ground is shifting over time. Delta is trended data, which is what we need to see the trends of subsidence or uplift or whatever over a long period of time. STD dev is D trended data. So just remember to use the delta section, whether it be delta E, delta N, or delta U. Also remember the measurements are always in meters when downloading data from UNAVCO, and they never correspond to an exact level of the ground since that really wouldn't matter much, since any volcanic monitoring would deal with the difference between the values. If you're already fluent in finding, accessing, and downloading seismic data, then this should be pretty easy for you. I hope you enjoyed this. There's of course a parts section below, so you could take your time through this video. However, I do suggest using personal experience and trial and error because in my opinion, it's the best teacher by far. Well, unless you actually have a teacher and are going to school to learn this stuff. I hope you enjoyed the new possibilities, guys. God bless. And remember, if you don't understand how something works, you cannot know if it is working correctly. God bless, guys. See you later.